I want to talk to you guys about an anomaly that keeps happening in my gravity flyer. And what it is, is in my Tesla coil, the top four inches of it are at a different frequency than the rest of my Tesla coil. Now it's oscillating just fine, but it has pulled down the frequency in the top of my Tesla coil. It's running at 20 hertz. So why is it doing this? Well, one of the reasons is, is I'm adding so much more to my Tesla coil. So my number two coil on my Tesla coil is not only the capacitance that it has in the length in the wire. Now it also has the wire that's coming through the center of it out to my gravity flyer. And it also has my gravity flyer as well. All of that is now my number two coil. So what happens is it's interfering in the whole thing. So it's not just a little bit of wire. You'd say, okay, you just put the wire on the top four inches and it's creating an anomaly. That wire is all the way down. It's all the way down past the number one coil. So what is it doing? It's pulling down the top and it's creating a steady frequency. That frequency is not changing. It's staying right there. No matter how much power I put into this Tesla coil, that frequency stays the same. It's an anomaly. So, let's follow up the anomaly altogether. What in the world could it be interacting with to keep it there? Or, what, how could we use that to actually build something out of it? So, what's going on is I'm getting pulse rates and everything in my center disc. My bottom disc is actually running at one rate, and it pulses. And I can tell you right now that that right there pulses at the exact same as the little wire that comes off as your number two coil and it's sparking. That spark rate is exactly the same as my bottom disc. So what's at 20 hertz? My upper disc. Every time that I set my upper disc, it sets at 20 hertz. Why? It's probably spinning at 1200 RPM. I just got some magnetic tape in and I will double check that number on one of my next tests. I have a very sneaky suspicion that both of those are tied into those two spots. And every time I test, it looks the same way. I'm getting the bottom pulse rate of my bottom disc to pulse on my Tesla coil on the little wire that comes off of my Tesla coil on the number two coil. Those pulse rates are exactly the same. Now, the pulse rate from my upper disc is exactly the same in the top four inches of my Tesla coil. Right now, I am hitting both. Both are telling me we're on. We got it. These two right here match these two right here. Now, all I need to do is amplify them. Here's the trick. The top part, because it's driven by the disc, and the other part is driven by the disc, and the pulse rates are hitting at that. Now, here's the thing. I'm sure a lot of you are screaming right now, no, it's in kilohertz. It's so fast you can't see it. You can't see that little thing, you know, spark it off. But I can. And that's what's driving me nuts. Every time this thing goes around, this thing is pulsing. So you could tell me all day it's in the kilohertz. I'm going to tell you it's not. Because I can physically see it. And it's matching a pulse rate. Now, may it be doing the beat rate, maybe, of that to this? Yes. That I can understand but it's interacting in that way. So, what is that telling me? If these two discs are controlling my Tesla coil, I can now amplify the signal of those frequencies. The frequencies are not changing. They are set by my disc. Now that they're set by my disc, I can now change the amplitude of those frequencies. And now I can ramp up that Tesla coil and change the amplitude. Now I'm getting a bigger value out of it. Now, have I seen this in testing? Yes, I have. For those of you who have seen the testing where I do my Tesla coil and I showed you, I specifically said in the last video, look at this, the bottom of the Tesla coil, the light's not coming on a whole lot. Top four inches, immediately extra amount of energy. Why? Because I am getting an amplitude right there. It is driving it up. The frequency is the same, it's the amplitude that's coming up. Now I know why Alexi is testing everything together. Why he is 
actually putting the top and bottom disc in a certain set and then he's changing things back to it. If this frequency matches these frequencies and all he's doing is ramping up the amplitude, now I understand. Now I am getting the full picture of what he's doing here. He is now adding amplitude to everything. And that really coincides with the rest of what's going on. All he's doing in everything that he sets is adding amplitude. So if all the frequencies are in there and you get frequency match, then you're adding amplitude. That's what's so puzzling about this piezo disc. It's also doing the same thing. We're looking for amplitude. We're not looking for it to change the frequency. And this will drive people nuts. That little piezoelectric disc, it's not only giving out energy, because we're putting energy out to it, but by its very nature, you can set that thing up to take in energy. You put it on a surface that's vibrating, and you put it over to a capacitor. What happens? The capacitor fills up with energy, and you're able to use the energy of that capacitor. It's important to note that it works in both ways. It works in two different directions. So, what does that mean? You're going to get two frequencies out of it. Whether you like it or not, you're going to get two frequencies out of it. So you're going to get one that's coming in, one that's coming out. It's just the nature of the beast here. Now, will one overcome the other? Possibly, but it's not going to make it go away. It's still going to be there. So you have to account for that. Now, what we're looking to do here, now that we know this is going on, now that we know that this whole anomaly is working out, now we're going to go back to our field strength test. Now that we know how we can amplify stuff, let's go back to what we want to do. Let's put the static field back in the center. Let's put the Tesla coil on the outside. Now one of the reasons I did this test in the beginning is I wanted to know, can the Tesla coil push out or pull in any field? And the answer is yes. So how do I know that? So let's go to the reverse experiment where I put the static on the outside and the testicle on the inside. All I did was I, I know the two fields are interacting. I know the two fields give out a bigger energy wave when they connect together. So all I did was I up my testicle and pushed out my static frequency right there. I pulled out, pushed out my static field, sorry, pushed out my static field and it went everywhere. Now, when I put it in the testicle on the outside, and I put the same amount of static electricity on the inside. What's going on? The field's holding in. I get zero problems with my electronics until I amplify anything in my high voltage where it's over the amount of my Tesla coil. Then I have a problem. But as long as I can keep this, this right here, this high voltage part, under what my Tesla coil's given out, I can hold the field in. Now, will there be a little bit of back and forth, back and forth? Absolutely. There always will be. There's two fields in the air interacting that's always going to happen. So I now know that I can hold in my field and I can make a field expand. What does that mean? I'm going to cause pressure. One of the things that people always talk about in the air, what are you doing to change the air? You know, all this stuff. Creating pressure. I'm creating pressure inside this bubble. The most that I can push this static out, the more that I can pull in this testicle uh, out on the outside, the better off I am for creating pressure on the inside. I know about static electricity. I can make things lift with static electricity. It's not that hard. I showed you in my paper uh, lifter experiment that you could take electrostatic charge and make it lift something. It's basically a capacitor at that point. If you set anything like that and just diverge for one second on this, we're looking at static charge for a pressure amount. So if you set a big plate and a small plate and you put this in between and it goes up, what is it doing? It crosses pressure to the center plate and it will stay there as long as the energy's on. But when you flip it upside down, it does as well. You can try to pull it off and it'll drop right back down. What is that telling you? If putting an immense amount of pressure but it's not built between two fields like you think it is. What's actually going on is if you put them all together, where it's too tight to move, you're putting pressure in one direction. There is no ion wind here, guys. 
This is static electricity causing pressure. So, what does that mean? When you apply that much pressure on something, you create movement. No matter how you want to look at it, it's going to create movement. It always does. So if you ever put that on a pendulum, you can clearly put it on one side and hit the button and boom, it'll hit off. You can put one on the other side and they'll hit off and they'll start doing this. I think that's what T.T. Brown was going to look for. He found a way to, ex to take that and make it into the capacitor you see. What's the trick? The trick is something that you may not really understand. How do you take something that's a like dielectric and make it into something that's not a dielectric, but then can be a dielectric as well. That's what the paper's for. The paper will hold in energy, but it's not a natural source of holding in energy. It's not supposed to, but in static electricity, the paper in the paper lifter is actually holding in the volume of energy. That's where your force is. It's the, the two plates are creating their own force. Where it holds in the maximum amount of force is that piece of paper. Anyway, that's just a different, a whole different experiment, and uh, we'll get into that some other time. But it does tie into a, to this whole thing here. If I want to create a lift in this craft, all I got to do is take the center plate, and make it positive, and make the lower plate negative, and I can get a force between the two. That's as simple as it gets. All I have to do is take out the top field. I need to take that field, and I need to push it into my center disc. That's it. As soon as I can do that, I can have a lifting force. Then, if I take off the pressure on that top disc and allow it to bounce back, I can have a neutral field in the center, a positive and a negative uh, field on the top, and then I can have balance. I think that's what Alexi's doing here. That's his static field in the center. He's creating an imbalance by pushing the field into that whole gravity flyer there for an instant. And in an instant, it jumps. And then it cannot hold that. It cannot hold that positive charge on that center plate. It'll bounce back to an equalization right there. It'll have an equal field of positive and negative and a neutral field in the center. And that's how he's getting lift. That's his lift factor. That's it. And it takes the piezoelectric disc to take that field on the top and push it down. What's the problem in the experiments that I'm having? I don't have enough power. I'm running this thing at 5 volts. I just don't have enough power. I need to change this where I don't blow out the circuit, but I create enough power. That's it. I just want to quickly hit the button and dissolve that whole top disc. I just want to dissolve it right into that center plate. That's it. I want to make a force and push it down. That's it. Boom. Hit it. Push it down. Let go of the button. Allow it to bounce back. Push it down. Okay. When you push the button, allow it to bounce back. Every time. If we can do that, then we have our lift factor. And that's as simple as explanation I can give you on it. It's a static electricity experiment, and it's basically shoving that top positive into that center plate, making everything on the top positive, and the one plate on the bottom is negative, and it's creating a force that goes up. It's as simple as it gets. Then you undo the button, and it makes the balance again. That's it. You just have to have the correct frequency and amplitude of it to, do, to make that positive on the top go into that center plate. That's about as, as simple as it gets. Now, on the testicle on the outside, it has to be based on oscillation. If you do not have oscillation on the outside, you won't get anywhere. You cannot run a steady frequency into something and get it to work. Not as a field on the outside. You need it to be pulsed. It has to be oscillated. Now, you may get mad at me for using those two words and interchanging them, but that's exactly what's going on here. So this right here is pulsing on and off. This right here, this field is pulsing on and off. And that's it, guys. You need that to disrupt. Gravity waves come down like this, right? And they're putting, applying force onto something. That's what it's doing. Now I want to disrupt that. I want to just pulse it out of disruption. I want it to just move to the sides like this. I want to create this in a rate that matches the frequency rate of the Earth. I think every planet's different in this. Every one of them has a different pulse rate. Our magnetosphere is not staying steady pushing out. It's pulsing just like this. Just like the field that goes around the Earth is pulsing. If I can match that pulse rate, 
I can disrupt gravity. And that's really what it is. So, I always give the example, horses on a bridge, why is it bad? It's disrupting pulse rates. That's it. It's something in the low hertz that actually disrupts everything in the whole world. Everything else in this world starts to go up exponentially from there. But when you get into those low, low frequencies, it starts to really disrupt everything in this earth. We're not allowed to go into the low frequencies. People show up at your door if you start doing it. And I have a feeling I'm going to get people showing up at my door when I start doing it. Why? Because it's disrupting AM radio frequencies. It's disrupting other things. People ask, can you pick this up on AM radio? Well, yeah. Depending on how low you go, you could pick it up. Why they switch to FM radio? Because they knew it was a problem. They knew it. It comes in clear, yeah, all those fun things. It's a problem. And that's the way it is. They always change things when they're a problem, and they tell you some other fancy reason. So, whatever. Let's go back to the experiment. I need to create a pulse rate on the outside, and I just need it to pulse. And I have that in my Tesla coil. Now I know where to amplify it at. I know what I'm matching here. I know where to amplify it. So the next couple tests are going to be some amazing tests coming out, guys. I have some real cool things where I'm going to push fields to show you how much energy is in them. And then I'm going to show you exactly how to pull that in with that Tesla coil. So what I'll do is I'll set up some four-foot lights all the way around. And then I'll put my gravity flyer in the center. And I'll take the Tesla coil and put it in the center. Then I will take the field for my static electricity put it on the outside. And then I'm going to hit my Tesla coil and ramp it up. And I'm going to push that field all the way out. And then I'll show it with just my Tesla coil hooked to it and see how far it gets. We're going to find out exactly how much pressure it's putting on it. Then I'll know by reversing it exactly how much pressure it's putting into it to hold it in. And that's going to be a very important test in order to understand this. Guys, we're in a whole different area. So those people out there who think this thing does nothing, there's so much science involved in this thing. It's insane. The amount of knowledge you have to actually put together and things to interact is unbelievably hard. So for those of you out there, and I'll just sell this to you, I know a lot of you out there want to change things in this. Please understand. This man built this as a balanced system. We've all seen his uh, gravity flyer. We've all seen it broken apart with CM circuits. It's, it's all junk. But the crazy thing is, is every single time I go to look at what field he's creating or energy he's creating or RPM or anything else, the guy is just checking off boxes like crazy. It's insane how many different things are in this. Like every... Every time you try to discount it, you can't. And that's the problem here. So I'm looking at this thing in depth in science. I get it. I know what's going on now. I now understand exactly where the parameters are. Now I just need to be able to show it to you guys so you guys can see it. So in the next couple of videos you'll see from me, we're doing a lot of field testing, a lot of pushing things out. And I asked for a Gravito meter from Charlie and hopefully he gets me that. Because I want to see exactly what Alexi's seeing versus what I'm seeing. And if I can match the two, I know where he's at. I, I, I've figured out a lot of the other parts, guys. I, I've already put it together. Now, I deal normally in things that you can see. I don't like things on oscilloscopes and I don't like things on meters. Not as much as everybody else. I like to be able to see the effect. Gravity is only going to be broken when you change it and make it lift. It won't be changed on a a scale to give you an improper reading. It won't be changed on an oscilloscope. It's going to be changed in real time right in front of you when it lifts. And that's the answer. And I'll do everything I can to do it. Now, do I still want all those readings? Absolutely I do. Because I want to be able to have other people verify it and be able to set it the same. So I'll have to do all that. I'll have to put in all the work to make that work. But the way I generally work, guys, is very simple. If it causes an action, there must be an equal and opposite reaction. Where is it? Where am I finding it? What do I have to do to find it? Where can I fine tune it? Where can I amplify it? Those are the questions I have. In everything that I do, that's the way I work. I'm going to push a circuit to its limit. And then I'm going to break it and blow it up. 
and then I'm going to run it at the very lowest limit and see where it can actually turn on at. Then I'm going to run it right in the middle of the sweet spot and find out exactly where that is. That's how this works. Okay, All the things in the world can't get you there unless you do every test possible to make this thing work. That's what I do. I break things down. I test them. I figure them out. I try to share. There's a lot of things I convey out there that maybe other people don't see. Or maybe they haven't done that test so they don't see it. The trial for me is to be able to have you see exactly what I'm seeing. So you're going to see a lot more camera angles coming up in the future. I bought some more cameras. What I want to do is have two or three different cameras on this at once. Because all the interactions are so important. So I'm just going to put it all together in one video. I'll try to kind of keep it off to the side. Maybe three boxes and one, one in the main one. And we can get this thing working right. Guys, I think we're close. We're into the fields. We understand the RPMs. And now we're in the final stages of this. It's going to at some point do something. Whether it just jumps off the ground a little bit. Whether it moves to the side. Whatever the case is going to be, it's going to do it. Because it's going to do it in this area right here. When you start playing with fields. When you start playing with messing with a whole bunch of energy. Bubbles inside of bubbles. Then you're going to get some kind of reaction out of it. And that's what I'm looking for. Guys, I, I hope I'm right. You know what? I don't always have to be right, but in this case, I really hope that I'm right. I, I'm really putting the work in to get this, this thing to work right. And I hope in the next couple of videos, like I said, I can show you the examples of this. And you guys can see exactly how far I can push this thing. Because if you think it's just a little bit of energy or you think your Tesla coil alone can beat what I'm doing at the same voltage, huh, I'm sorry it can't. But not in any way. I, I disrupt this whole room. So, anyway, if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you for watching.